so yeah we are live hello everyone a very very warm welcome on sachin dia talk show and in today's show we have a very special guest from all the way from arizona usa uh, mr jeff peg thank you so much jeff for coming and uh, it really means a lot uh, thank you so much absolutely no i really appreciate the opportunity to connect with you and to be able to be on your show and connect with your audience yeah so thank you so much once again it's pleasure having you on the show now uh, jeff is an, an entrepreneur and have the 20 years of experience in you know been uh, guiding people coaching people and achieving their biggest dreams in their life uh, he is a mindset coach as well in you know, focusing on mindset business coach and helping out a lot of entrepreneurs to set up their businesses and apart from that he is also uh, you know coach basketball team as well so uh, jeff w- welcome once again before starting i really want to know uh, whether you have come to india or not i mean you have the opportunity to you know come to india i have the experience of uh, you know tasting the diff- different different delicious delicacies that we have calories that we have so yeah i i have not i i actually one of my business partners has and so he's told me a lot about it but i have never had the opportunity to be there yet okay i'll be waiting to receive you uh, you know just uh, let me know when you got the opportunity to come here yeah it's well really nice connecting with you yeah so let's just begin the, the show the very first question that i want to ask you is to share a brief about you your journey your experience as a coach since you are interacting with a lot of people right so please share your journey and your uh, journey as a coach your experience with the, with the people sure i i actually have quite a diverse background um my education when i went to university i majored in entrepreneurship i wanted to be my own boss i wanted to have my own companies and what not while i was going to school i worked at a bank and but at the same time i was a professional rodeo cowboy and so <clears throat> when i graduated from school the bank offered me a job to come in and train and get into the banking industry and i turned it down because i wanted to st- be a cowboy so i continued yeah. on that path for a while and then i decided to go back to the bank and fortunately they still had a job for me and i i was fortunate enough that i was able to climb the ladder really quick within the banking industry mm-hmm. and soon i was uh, a bank manager and i had the opportunity i was what we call a full service bank manager so i managed managed the branch but i also had the opportunity i did all the business loans and agriculture loans and stuff like that and what i loved about that was it gave me an opportunity to sit down with business owners and really mentor them from a banking perspective and really see what they were doing and it it kind of spurred my drive more to be an entrepreneur and i i <clears throat> i was still doing some entrepreneurial ventures i i owned a mini storage facility i owned some um real estate and stuff like that but um it really got me looking at businesses and wanting to do more and more of it and one day i was with one of my clients and he was building homes mm-hmm. and he had a catalog on his desk for artificial stone veneer that they put on the front of homes mm-hmm. and through that conversation i decided to quit the bank and figure out how to make stone and so okay. in 2005 i quit the bank and created a company called kodiak mountain stone and we got into the manufacturing of artificial stone veneer and when i i i i lived in canada at the time and i flew to missouri and found someone that taught me how to do it and when i was flying home i remember sitting in the airport thinking this is easy i it's so much easier than i thought it would be and this is what i'm going to do and i was excited to get home and create my first stone and you know i'd be kind of the start of the company it'd probably sit on my shelf forever so i got home and got got going and the next day i went to demold and take this stone out of the mold and this beautiful brown stone that i had in my mind that we were going to make came out and it was pink and <clears throat> so that was kind of the start of me realizing there's a lot bigger learning curve than what i had imagined and it it took it was a lot in the manufacturing process to get to where we ended up but it was it was just a great experience but throughout the time as an entrepreneur and running Kodiak Mountain Stone which is a company i still run today i've had a lot of opportunities to help other entrepreneurs start businesses or pivot or do different things um but i've also had the opportunity one of the things that i really loved was for about 4 years i would go to hawaii to brigham young university of hawaii and work with the students there and mentor them on their business plan competitions 
and, or their business plans. And then I'd be a judge in their business plan competition. And it really, I really loved just having that opportunity to mentor and coach and do those things. Yeah. And so with my partner in the stone company, we all, we often, I mean, I've messed up a lot. We've done a lot of things yeah. that we thought were going to be great ideas and they mm -hmm. were crashed or whatever. And we'd always talk about it. And I'd tell them, I said, you know what? These are things that if I was an entrepreneur and I could know some of these things ahead of time, it could make my life a lot easier. And I talked a lot about wanting to be a coach. And he called me one day and he says, I have someone I want you to meet. And I went and met him and he's a very successful coach. And I found out we have very similar backgrounds. Um, he was in the manufacturing industry, in the home building industry. And we got talking and I've done, some, at that time I had done some training as a coach and stuff like that. And I told him I wanted to get into coaching. And he basically said, you know, why aren't you doing it? You've got the experience, you've got the education, you got the background, why aren't you doing it? And that was kind of what I needed, I guess, to kind of spur me on and say, yeah, this is something I've wanted to do and mm -hmm. I, I can go do this. And so I did get some more education on it and started doing the coaching. I still run Kodiak Mountain Stone, but I've been coaching and it's been something that I loved. Um, I've done it um, from a different couple different aspects. Started out mostly doing business coaching, which I really enjoy. Um, but one of the things, as you had mentioned, I focus a lot on mindset and because it doesn't matter if I'm coaching someone from a life coach perspective or I'm coaching them from a business coaching perspective, mindset plays such an important role. And so that's where a lot of my focus has been. And, you know, over the course of the last uh, couple of years, I've developed a lot of, I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching, but I've also developed a lot of online courses for the business side of it, for the success coaching side of it and a lot of different things. And it's just all kind of come together. We've got masterminds and a lot of different things that we're doing. So yeah. that's a little bit of synopsis of what my journey has been to get to where I am today. Yeah, I think it's a wonderful journey. I, I can totally uh, no, relate that passion that you have for mentoring and mentoring and coaching people and helping them out and serving them out. I can, uh, you know, I also have this passion of helping out people because uh, I was also into my, you know, job, corporate job, but there was something that was missing from my life. And then uh, mentoring and coaching something that I really love about, you know, helping out people, serving people. So I just see coaching and mentoring just as, you know, serving people, helping out them with their problems because we all have gone through our mess, right? And we all have exactly. our own, yeah, we all have our own share of experiences, mistakes, problems, challenges that we have faced. So yeah, it's uh, I can totally relate in a wonderful journey. So uh, Jeff, the next question I want to ask you is what? So while I was doing the research uh, on you, so I found out that you talk a lot about daily success strategies, right? You, uh, yes. you uh, Yeah. So I just want to know from the perspective of an entrepreneur right? Someone who want to start a business or someone already in the business. So what are those success strategies? And I would request you to share a few of them uh, with the audience here as well. Absolutely. So how that started, um, I had someone uh, just a few months ago come to me um, as a close friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And he was going through some difficult times through uh, the pandemic and stuff with his employment with and just needed a little bit of motivation. And so he asked me, he's like, could you you know, help me out. Just, you know, shoot me an email every morning. Just give me some ideas, some thoughts just to keep yeah. me motivated. <clears throat> so that's how it started. And I did that. And pretty soon I started doing it through video. And then I started putting those videos on YouTube and now it's turned into a podcast, uh, Jeff Hagee's daily success strategies. And so yeah. Monday to Friday, I, I get on and I do these podcasts and I, I really talk about a lot of different things. Um, you know, sometimes I'll be I'll be talking on the business side and I'll be talking about um, pricing strategies and marketing and those sort of things. But for the most part, I talk about things that are relied, related to mindset and stuff like that. Um, you know, and, and I try to, you know, I, in fact, yesterday I was kind of trying to build out what I'm going to talk about this week. And I try to build it out so we can build upon each other. And, you know, this week, um, some of the things that I'm going to be talking about um, tomorrow, I'm going to be talking about the passion and obsession and that burning desire that you need yeah. to really be able to focus on things. And then I'm going to be talking about belief, having that belief in yourself and just different stuff like that on some, sometimes it's things that people know, they just don't know how to implement. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just 
something that people don't know or understand that they need to say, okay, that's something I can change. Or, you know, I'm, I'm sure we're going to go into this, but one of the things that I talk about a lot is how to control and fix your mindset. So it's taking you in the proper direction. And what, and the other part that we do is um, every Monday, what I'll do is have the people that are listening and I try to get them to comment a lot to kind of put make make themselves more accountable. But what are the things you need to do this week so that by Friday you can say you had a successful week. And so then on Friday, we are like, okay, this is what you said you're going to do. Have you been able to do those things? And is that getting you closer to your bigger goals? Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. I think uh, mindset is something that I also consider very, very important in irrespective of whatever field you are in, right? Whether you are uh, into sports, whether you are into business, whether you are into a corporate professional, I think mindset is very, very critical factor among all the successful people because uh, I'm also, you know, teaching people success habits. What are the habits that you should have in daily basis so that you can achieve your goals. And uh, the very first important thing I don't talk about people is their mindset and their why, why they are doing, why they want the, you know, the thing they want to achieve. Right? Exactly. So mindset is very, very critical, irrespective of, you know, uh, which is your field and at which level you are of your life is right. So mindset is very, very critical. And I totally agree with you on that. So uh, the next one is, uh, I think in today's world, we need those, those, the need of self-development is very, very important. And I think it's more important. So because considering the last six months that we have, you know, there are so many problems, challenges, the whole world has faced. So now what's your take on that self-development part? Because uh, irrespective of the country, right, we need, uh, something we need something to motivate people to come out from their you know challenges emotionally financially and there are challenges you know uh, at mental levels as well so what's your take on that on the self development part basically yeah i mean <clears throat> what i've i mean i've always been a big believer in it and what i have noticed is as the pandemic began mm -hmm. so many people just started to sit back and say you know i I have no control. I've got to wait until someone tells me to do something. I believe now is more important than ever a time to be working on your personal development and expanding your skills and stuff because there are going to be opportunities for people. You know, there's a lot of terrible things that are happening. I'm not, I'm not saying there's not, but there are also a lot of opportunities that are going to present themselves. You look throughout history and some of the biggest companies around that we see today came out of a disaster like this. Yeah. And so what I did is when this all began, um, I got I got thinking about this a lot and some of the things I was seeing. So I, I developed a free course that I put on my website called my momentum series mm -hmm. that was exactly for this purpose. And it's also some of the things you were talking about. So it's just three videos in it. And the first part is helping people get clarity on what some of their goals can be, what the direction would be to get there. But like what you're saying, you teach as well, I think is the most important part. What is the why behind each of those? And so I dig deep and help them figure out what that why is. Because one of the things about it is when you're, um, when we go talk more about mindset, I'll talk about the reticular activating system. Yeah. But when you're focused on things that you can learn in self-development and self-education and stuff, when opportunities present themselves, it's a lot easier for you to recognize them. But when you're just sitting back waiting for someone to tell you, okay, now you can go back to work or whatever it is, there might be an opportunity right in front of your face that you're not really recognizing because that's not something that you've told yourself is important and that you need to pay attention to. But I, I you know, whether it's in a pandemic or whether it's in things are going great, yeah. I think you need to make it a consistent habit to dedicate some of your time in your life to personal development, to your reading, to your podcast, to listening to shows like this and just getting ideas and inspiration and things that you can do to grow as an individual. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think, uh, you know, we don't have, we don't need to be face a challenge or a problem to start looking at yourself, right? You always uh, should focus on your bigger goal and just chase the goal and uh, just focus on that. So uh, let's Absolutely. talk about mindset now. I mean, just the way you have said that, uh, you know, just share what you teach, how you teach about the mindset and how someone can cultivate that winning mindset, right? Irrespective of the situations or circumstances around us, how we can stay focused on uh, that goal or, uh, you know, that thing that really want to achieve from our life. So how you teach uh, about the mindset to the people? 
Yeah, for sure. And this is a this is a subject that I love because I've got an opportunity to work with my clients, um, whether it's on the one on one or the group coaching or whatever we're doing. But one of the things, um, for example, last year, as you, I think you mentioned it, that I was, I'm a basketball coach as well. And yeah. usually what I would do is on Wednesday nights when we had our mind, our, our mastermind call, it would be right before my basketball practice. So I'd be in our film room um, doing my mastermind call. Then I would come out to my basketball team and I would sit them down and teach them the same thing we talked about in the mastermind because it doesn't matter if you're <clears throat> looking at it from being a parent, from being an entrepreneur, from mm -hmm. being an athlete, you know, yeah. mindset can make such an impact on so many areas of your life. And so it was, it was really cool to be able to see how we could talk about a subject and help someone that was in business and help them improve their business. And then I could walk out and talk to my athletes about it and it could help them become better basketball players and better people and stuff like that. So one of the things that really got me starting to focus on the mindset part was thinking about, it started with the conversations that we have with ourselves and looking at that. And, you know, when you think about it, the conversations that you're having with yourself are usually in the form of asking and answering questions of yourself. And even thinking about that, you probably said, is that right? Well, yeah, you're asking yeah. yourself that question. Is that what I do? Yeah. And so what happens is we get in a habit of how we ask questions and however, whatever those habitual questions that we're always asking ourselves has a big impact on where we're going with our lives because it affects our mindset. Exactly. So look at, look at an example of someone that's always asking themselves, you know, why does this happen to me? Why me? Why, why do I think I can achieve those goals? And they really look at things in a negative fashion. Mm -hmm. Well, that has a negative impact on their mindset and it kind of just spirals. Yeah. yeah. Now, when you start paying attention to these habitual questions you ask, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that it, you're never going to say that something might happen and you might say, why me? But what's going to happen is you start to recognize that. And then you can change that conversation you're having. Because when you start having, instead of saying, you know, why does this happen to me? And saying something like, hey, what, what is this situation giving me that could be an opportunity? Exactly. exactly. You're going to yeah. look at things different. Yeah. So that's where your RAS comes into play. That's your reticular activating system. And I'm not a doctor, so I can't give you all the ins and outs of it, but it's just a, basically it's the filter in your brain. You know, we have so many things happen around us every single day, every single second from, from right now, the clothes touching our skin to, you know, I've got these in my ears and we don't pay attention to because our RAS isn't identifying that as something important to us. So an example I like to use is um, a few years ago when I moved from Canada to Arizona, I bought my daughter a little Mitsubishi Spider convertible car, really cool car. I had never seen the car before, okay. but we bought that car. And all of a sudden I started seeing that car everywhere. And it wasn't a matter of all of a sudden everyone else bought that car too. That car had always been around. I had just never noticed it, but because it was something that my RAS was saying it was important now I was starting to notice it it's like when a lady buys a dress and all of a sudden she sees a bunch of other ladies wearing the same dress they were already there it's just it's important to you now so you start paying attention to it mm -hmm. so when you can start taking control of the habitual questions you ask yourself it's what your RAS is going to recognize as something important to you mm -hmm. so if you can start asking yourself on a regular basis some important questions about goals and those sort of things, it's going to help you identify and recognize opportunities that are going to help you achieve those goals. So that's what I was saying, you know, someone that's out of work or whatever it is because of the pandemic, mm -hmm. rather than focusing on that negative, when they can set up a system where they're asking themselves the questions that are going to get them to focus on the right things, yeah. they might recognize something right in front of their face that if they hadn't been thinking about that, they wouldn't have noticed it. So with that, what I've done is I've created what I call my mindset questions. And you can go to jeffhagey.com slash mindset to get those. Mm -hmm. But what they are is every single morning, I've got a set of questions that I go through. And I just ask myself these questions. 
and they kind of help prime me for the day, but also help me to recognize some things if they happen. And then at night, I have another set of questions I go through. And then I also have some that I start at the first of the week, first of the month. But the most important ones to me are the ones that I ask on a daily basis because they kind of, they prime me so that if an opportunity presents itself and I've been training my brain to understand that that's something important to me, I'm going to recognize it. And yeah. something that I've recently added to it, because I used to, at the first of the month, I'd also write down my top goals. Mm -hmm. I actually do that on a daily basis now too, mm -hmm. because if you're thinking about that every morning, you're writing down what your top goal is. When there's something that presents itself that could help you achieve that goal, you're going to recognize it rather than, rather than miss it. Yeah. Yeah. I think journaling is very, very important. And when it comes to goal, right, you should, uh, I think writing down is something that's going to really, I don't know what behind writing is that you just putting down your thoughts on a sheet of paper, you know, on a sheet of paper. And then automatically you, you know, get that uh, push that uh, you're going to go and go after it and you have to do this, you have to do this. So I think there's something in writing down goals. And this is what I also yeah, teach my clients as well, that because our mind has so many thoughts and there are approximately, I've read that 60 to 70,000 thoughts pass in a day in an average human brain and so we have so many cluttered brain uh, so many cluttered thoughts we have so it's better to write down your goals so that you can have that clarity what you have to do in a, in a specific day what are the goals that you want to achieve on that day right yes absolutely yeah 100 percent. i agree with you yeah. uh, so the next question is related to this only i mean uh, so uh, what is your take on mentoring and coaching I mean, uh, irrespective of the, you know, which, which country you belong to, there are so many people, those who are not happy or don't, those who don't have the clarity, clarity on their goals and the clarity on their life, what they really want to do, right? They feel lost. And uh, so what's, so what's your take on the mentoring and coaching business as a whole? I mean, uh, growing up, I was struggling a lot. You know, I was not able to um, achieve my goals, which I set for myself. Then I get into depression. And so I, at that time, I need someone who can guide me and who can you know, really help me out to come out of that situation. Uh, so that's why I realized the importance of having mentors at the right time. You know, those who can uh, tell you that uh, this is not the end of the life, right? Yeah. And I was just 22 at that time. So it really, really, you know, it's, uh, this is the, one of the experience that I'm sharing with you. So what's your take on having the mentors, having the right coaches, because uh, whether you are athlete, whether you are a business, whether you are entrepreneur or you are in a corporate field, you, we all you know need someone to guide us, to help us and uh, getting out of the difficult situation. So yeah, please share your thoughts on the, having the mentor and having the coach. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, same thing with me, you know, throughout all my life, I've had the opportunity to have some incredible mentors and coaches that have been life-changing for me um and it's it's interesting to look at it because so many people think oh i don't need a mentor i don't need a coach i can do this on my own yeah. but i i like to relate it to athletes you know michael jordan had a coach tiger woods had a coach you know wayne gretzky had a coach and the thing about that is coaches can see things that you can't see exactly. coaches can have experiences that you don't understand and um, even, you know, when I, this is a little bit different, but it kind of relates with the, with my mastermind group, the thing that a mastermind group or a coach or a mentor can do is make you see things from a different perspective. When I was um, going through the 2008 crash and everything, mm -hmm. because my business was in the real estate industry, it was, we were hurting. And I knew I needed to make some changes and I wasn't sure how I was going to do those. And I had an opportunity that I was in Hawaii at a business conference and I was sitting at a table and one of the ladies at that table owned a scrapbooking company. And, you know, I own a stone company. She owns a scrapbooking company. They have nothing in common, yeah. but she told me a story about some things that she did with her company that all of a sudden it set a light off for me. And I'm like, that's exactly what I need to do in my stone company. And so even though I would have never gone to her for business advice because she owns a scrapbook company, yeah. she told me something that really made me pivot and change the way I was running my company. And that's what a coach and a mentor can do is they can see things from a different perspective. And especially when they've got experience. I mean, as a coach, I use so much of my experience from running this company since 2005 or different companies I've ran before that and or even from my banking experience that when you haven't been in those situations yet, you, you don't know how you, you think you know how to run things, but 
a coach or a mentor can save you so much time, money, and effort. And, you know, I, I was actually just recently in a Tony Robbins event. And that was one of the things he said, if you want to be successful, it doesn't matter what you're in, if you're in business, if you're a boss, if you're an employee, if you're a mother, if you're a father, whatever it is, one of the things you have to do is get a coach and a mentor. And that's someone that is not your friend because a friend isn't going to be able to tell you the truth that you need to hear when things are in tough circumstances. I think so that emotional someone, bias will come, right? Friends. Absolutely. Bias. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, when, when you're excited about an idea you have and you're, you've already convinced yourself you want to push forward with this idea that you had, but they're looking at it as, yeah, that, that could be a good idea, but this is where they're going to screw up. But I can't say something because look how excited he is. And so they're not going to be honest with you in that aspect where a mentor or coach could help you with that. And so I, I think the importance of a mentor and a coach is really getting, getting you to that next level, really being able to take your, what you are a, capable of and maximizing that mm -hmm. and I think it's one of the best investments you can ever make. Exactly. Exactly. I think that is very, very important uh, because again, um, taking from my experience when I was, you know, struggling with myself, then I invested a uh, few money in myself in the courses and get, getting into the co uh, you know, coaching system. So I found a really, really, you know, uh, how important it is. Before that, I was quite struggling uh, alone. I was not having that clarity on my mindset, but when I invested money on myself and get myself a coach, then I found what are the things that I was missing in my life. And finally, when and now I'm self, you know, myself is coaching people. Uh, it's again, a lot of people again, you know, found quite, uh, they found that uh, this is a waste of money. This is a waste of time in investing, coaching and mentoring. And again, I'm just told, you know, tell them that you want to save a lot of time and a lot of, you know, energy and struggling you alone. And then uh, at the end of the day, you have nothing in, uh, you know, in the hand as well. So it's better to invest in a coach, invest in uh, programs that really, really help you and shorten your path to achieve success. So yeah, totally go relate to that. So uh, the next question, uh, Jeff, that I really want to ask you is about, uh, since you have been you know, uh, interacting with so many entrepreneurs, so many people, so what are the top three challenges that you feel uh, that you know, people face in today's world? So from your experience yeah. as a coach, yeah. Um, a lot of them and you know, whether it's on a personal level or on a business level, mm -hmm. um, like I said earlier, I think a lot of them come back to mindset because a lot of them, um, number one is having that real belief in what you're able to achieve. Mm -hmm. Because when, when you're questioning yourself, when you, you might have this grandiose idea and you're really excited about it, but in your mind, you're telling yourself that it's probably not realistic, mm -hmm. you're going to create your own roadblocks. You're going to, just like we're talking about with your RS and recognizing opportunities, mm -hmm. it's going to recognize the roadblocks. And then you're going to start saying, see, I told you I wasn't going to do that. And so from that perspective, um, mindset and, you know, like right now with things that are going on, hitting these roadblocks and these challenges that are out of their control that, you know, when a business has to shut its doors because of the pandemic and they can't control that, how do you react to that? And, you know, you look at some of these companies, um, I, I was on a call with one of my coaches and we were talking about a company, it was in Utah, that it was actually, it was a restaurant that was just kind of doing okay. And as soon as this all happened, they created a, ordering service where they were doing online orders and doing deliveries and stuff and they're doing better than they've ever done and so it's that mindset of okay we've got to sit back and wait till they tell us we can open the doors again or how are we going to be innovating and how are we going to take things to the next level and so i think, I, adaptation I think that's is the word i think I, I would say adaptive right adaptive to the changes yeah, that yeah. Are happening. yeah exactly yeah um so that, that's definitely, definitely a big one. Um, another one I would say is probably understanding how to implement certain things because, you know, some of, some of the things from a business standpoint that I teach in my coaching, 
they're not rocket science yeah. but if you don't know how to implement them then you're not going to be able to utilize them right even even simple things like a drip campaign with an email campaign attached to it and teaching people about the fact that you know you've got to have follow up and you know how you can do that and how to provide the importance of providing value even if you're not getting a sale right away you know the more value you can add when that person becomes a buyer down the road they're going to come to you because you've given them so much value yeah. so it's learning how to implement some of those strategies and stuff like that would be a big thing and then another one um let me think of this So probably, um, you know, un understanding uh, the value of joint ventures, partners and networking and stuff, yeah. because I think that's probably one of the biggest things, you know, you can have the best product if you don't know anybody and nobody knows about the product. Yeah. You're never going to be able to do anything. And, you know, when you can one of the things I teach people is how to create strategic alliances and joint ventures and how to, how much that can spread. Um, you know, Russell Brunson teaches a, a great system called the dream 100. And, you know, when you start studying some of those things and see how they've implemented that and how it can just make things take off for you, it's really amazing, but it's really, creating that network, creating that trusted network and have a network that of people that trust you and being able to utilize that and give them value and in return have some value given back. Yeah, I think uh, you are rightly said that, uh, you know, networking as they say, network, your network is your net worth. If you have yeah. the best product in the world and don't know any, you know, don't, uh, don't know anyone who can buy your product, right? So there's no point in having that best product. And uh, exactly. again, yeah, the, the the first thing that you talk about, the first point is, you know, limiting belief, right? There people have the belief system, like they always, there is a negative voice going on in our head. And there are certain beliefs that hold them back. Yeah. So, since we, you know, face this pandemic situation, it's time to innovate. It's time to experiment. It's time to come up with something that you know be adaptive to the changes that is uh, environment is throwing uh, throwing uh, at us, right? Yes. So, and so next, that's, that's exactly going back to what we were talking about. When you can recognize that you're asking yourself those negative yeah. questions and change yeah. that conversation, you'll change your life. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, the next question is related to the implementation part, since you talk about the implementation. I mean, there is an, uh, since uh, you're also into you know, this online programming and masterminding. So I just want to ask you, so we all know, you know, the, the stats uh, of the you know, completion of the courses, people buy a lot of courses, but uh, again, the implementation is not there, right? Uh, you know, I, I've, you know, reading somewhere that only 10%, there is a completion rate of 10 to 15% hardly on the completion rate of the online courses that people want. So uh, your thought on the implementation, how people can implement, is this the something related to the coach itself or is it something related to the individual? I mean, uh, the coaching style should be in such a way that, you know, the next person, the people who was buying your courses feel that urge to implement those things. Or is something that are related to the, uh, the person who is buying only? I mean, so what's your take on the implementation part? You know, one, one of the things that I really believe is if you ask, you know, why don't people achieve all their dreams and their goals? And I think it's because it takes effort and consistent action. Yeah. And so when you talk about that, it's, you know, I, I've got, I've got one um, online business course that basically it's a, I took a year's worth of coaching and put it into an online course mm -hmm. um, for those that might not want one-on-one -on -one coaching or it doesn't work out for them, but they, they want the business coaching. And it's interesting to see how people utilize that because it's such a powerful course. And just like you say, every week they're getting a lesson and a, um, video and they'll start off strong and then some of them keep going strong and it just they kill it they do so good but then some of them you know they get one week behind and yeah. then pretty soon they're two weeks behind and then and they're just not putting the effort in to do it and that's what it all comes down to is you know how bad do you want it you know I talked about that on one of my daily success strategy podcasts the other day was how bad do you want it because it is going to take effort. It's going to take you doing something. And, and that's one of the things I really love about coaching and mentorship is holding someone accountable and making sure they do those things. Because 
what happens is when you do put the effort in and you start seeing those things happen, that's when they're going to get results. And then if someone else might take, say someone's taking a course mm -hmm. and nothing changes and they don't put the effort in, they miss some of the modules and nothing changes. And they're like, oh, that course didn't do anything for me. Well, it wasn't the course. It was the effort and implementation of them taking it. And then it was actually Thursday or Friday on my podcast. I talked about knowledge isn't power. Knowledge is potential power until you put action behind it. And that's exactly like you say with the course, when you're learning these things through a course or a coach or whatever, if you learn them all, I mean, you can see all the books behind me. If I read every single one of these books and don't put any action into it, it's yeah. useless. Exactly. So it's, it's really, as you gain new knowledge, as you gain the things from the course or the coach or the book or whatever, you've got to put it into action and you've got to put the effort into it. You know, you, you look at anyone that's successful, they didn't do it without any effort. Yeah. Yeah. So. Exactly. I think uh, it's more with, you know, the, uh, the, how badly you want, as you said, that, uh, that, uh, what are your reasons why you want to do what you want to do, how badly you want to achieve that. And, um, uh, the next question is also related to the same. I mean, um, teach people habits. And the most important thing uh, that I found in among all the people is that how to stay consistent. Like we all know what are the good habits for us, what are the bad habits for us. But uh, where a lot of people, even 90% of the people struggle is how to be consistent with those habits. Because at the end of the day, habits are very, very important when it comes to achieving your success, to reaching your goals, whether you are into business, whether you are into personal development or whether you are, you know, mental or emotional levels as well, right? And uh, right. so habits are very, very important factor. But uh, when I talk about talk to people, they all, you know, uh, complain one thing that is, I'm not able to stay consistent, how I can do that. So since you talk about a lot of success strategies, and again, the mindset thing uh, come into picture again, uh, that uh, again, the consistency factor. So what's your take on the consistency, how to stay consistent uh, with the habits? Yeah, so um, I'll use my mindset questions as an example. Mm -hmm. So those mindset questions I was talking about that, you know, you've got to go through them every morning. You've got to go through them every night. Mm -hmm. So when you look at that reality is, is it going to really make a big difference if you get home late and you haven't gone through them and you're just like, you know, I don't need to go through the questions tonight. I'm just going to bed. It's probably not going to make a difference in the whole scheme of things. Right. Mm -hmm. But the difference is, you know, you look at what successful people do successful people create success habits that they do consistently. Yeah. And so when you start to say, you know what, these questions take me five minutes, I'm tired, I need to go to bed, but I'm going to take the five minutes and I'm going to go through these. And pretty soon after you're doing that over and over, it becomes a habit that you just will start doing. And even though missing one time might not make a difference, the discipline of doing it all the time, one, Every time you do something that's a victory for yourself, you've got that dopamine push that's yeah. going to give you that yeah. more confidence. Yeah. And so just the fact that you disciplined yourself to do it is, is a win, right? Mm -hmm. But it's also, it's the things that you do every on a consistent basis, time and time again, that it starts to compound upon itself. Yeah. So skipping one time might not seem like it makes a difference but the fact that you're doing it and doing it over and over and letting that compound and build up you will create the winning um, component that you need to be successful and so creating the habits is just being disciplined enough to be able to consistently do it no matter what and that all comes back to what you talked about earlier is what's your why yeah. and and the way I teach um, how to find out your why is a process that we go through that takes some time because a lot of times how I used to teach it, we would talk about it and people would really put some thought into it and say, oh, here's my why. Mm -hmm. But how I do it now is once they get to that point, mm -hmm. we find out the why behind that. And we do it, we go, we do that. It's a less, it's a something I learned from Dean Graziosi and we call it the seven levels deep. Yeah, where yeah we ask that seven times until you really get to the point that yeah. you've discovered your why. Yeah. And that when you know what your true why is behind everything mm -hmm. is what's going to give you the discipline and motivation 
to do it and it's going to turn into a habit from that point exactly i think uh, again it's all come down to the mindset when I, you know uh, when i would look at habit or beat your uh, anything i think mindset is very very critical uh, in achieving anything any successful uh, thing in your life and you uh, bring the point of you know being compounding effect compounding effect and this is a very very important point right i mean uh, Uh, there is a story i have read the book of the compound effect by darren hardy and it's one of my favorite book i talk about with a lot of people you know the power of compounding how on daily basis you want to multiply if you want to think about negative terms of you to skip your uh, habits or doing uh, the tasks that you really want to do on a daily basis then it's going to multiply and you will not be able to achieve the success but if you put in your efforts on daily basis again the compounding effect is working behind and uh, you will gain the results right so yes. uh, i can totally yeah rightly said uh, that compounding effect is very very important and uh, you should put in efforts on daily basis so uh, uh jeff the last question is about the book i would really uh, you know ask you what are the top three books that you really want to recommend to the people on self development and on entrepreneurship as well yeah um you know as, as we talked about earlier personal development is such yeah. a important thing to me there's so many um I could I could really go on and on and give you quite a list of books but there's mm-hmm. a number you know if I look at my top 3 mm-hmm. probably two classics come to mind and one is Think and Grow Rich yeah. and the other one is How to Win Friends and Influence People you know those were all written almost 100 years ago and everything that's taught in them is I think all so time favorite today these two books are all time favorite when it comes to self development right yeah absolutely yeah. Yeah. absolutely So that, then after those two it really is I've got so many that I would love to share um there's probably probably it, it depends where I go with it whether I'm looking on the business side or if I'm looking at personal development or entrepreneurship whatever but one one that um I I've loved more and more um as I've read it more and more is Expert Secrets um by Russell Brunson you know it a lot of what russell talks about is focus on if you're going to be marketing through funnels and stuff like that but the thing about expert secrets even if you're never going to market with funnels and stuff the way he teaches how to tell stories and the things he teaches there i think are are invaluable for an entrepreneur to learn and then you know one one other i'll just throw in there um a good friend of mine richie norton wrote a book called the power of starting something stupid it's a it's another incredible book if you're an entrepreneur or even if you're not if you just want to have a mind shift to help you do things that you thought you couldn't do thank you so much jeff thank you so much for sharing i definitely going to pick out the last one that you shared uh, so it was wonderful connect i think uh, these two books that you shared the think and grow rich and you know how to influence people they are all time favorite and we have all read i mean those who want to self development or personal growth and uh, the one book that i really you know uh, I recommend people on successful habit is Dean Graziosi's Millionaire Success Habits. I mean, one of the yes. favorite book of mine. You know the the the, the seven why that you talk about, right? So this is what also teach people to know your why why you do what you do. So, uh, Jeff, it was amazing connecting with you. Thank you so much for your time and uh, on a such an early morning on Sunday and giving us your thirty precious minutes. So, thank you once again for joining the show. It was a pleasure having you on my show. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. If you don't mind, I'll just also. um one thing that on this whole subject that I've been working on and I wasn't going to announce it but I told someone about it this weekend and so now I've put it out there sure, sure. is this whole thing on mindset has become such an important thing especially right now um I have been working on a a course that I'm putting together on specifically for that high achievers mindset secrets mm-hmm. and so right now I have put it out there that anyone that pre-registers i am going to have it at a discounted price so right. anyone that in, is interested in that it's at mindset.jeffhakey.com and they can see all the information on that yeah i will put that down on the description as well in the video description so that if uh, anybody want to check sure. out they can pick that from here so thank you once again jeff thank you once again for sharing your insights and sharing your experiences your journey with all of us it was pleasure again having you and uh, yeah thank you so much Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to be with you here today. Yeah.
thank you so that's it from today's guys i hope you must have enjoyed and you must have gained a lot of perspective from uh, jeff's journey his insights his experience and expertise on self development and entrepreneurship i will see you in the another episode with another guest till then take care bye 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 thanks bye bye